Hey guys, what's happening? So, doing some printing last night for this thing and uh, the QD Tech thing here and my print failed. So I'm printing out the top lid here and it just stopped extruding. And um, I've been noticing this for a while now, but every once in a while it would stop doing that. But then sometimes it would stop and start again, leaving like a, like a, like a string like a like a like a failed layer like partially a failed layer so it looked like it was like the layers were splitting so i was like looking at everything checking all my alignment and what's weird because it, it would stop and start again so right so i didn't think it was a motor it wasn't a complete lockup uh but last night the motor finally completely locked up and this is a i'm running an hex light i never heard you about that one but the motor is totally locked up here well, it, you can you can free it and then it spins again, so it like locks up and then you can spin it again freely again, and then it like locks up again. Um, so I'm guessing it's some bad bearings. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I mean, these things are pretty cheap. You can get them for like as low as fifteen bucks. But if I do have to buy another one, I'm probably get an LDO. But uh, so I'm gonna take this part here and uh, take it off my thing here and. I'm going to open it up and see if I have any extra bearings I can use. I have a NEMA 17, but I know the shaft size is different, so... Um, I've never actually taken one of these apart, so I don't know what's even inside of it. Alright, anyway, so if you guys are new to my channel, um, or new to 3D printing, um, you know, these things fail non-stop all the time, so... Um, yeah, you have to get used to it. I mean, I mean, all day long, you'll have failed prints, Failed parts, failed motors, failed end stops. So it looks like there's just two screws to separate this thing. I might not be able to get that off because the, the bearing's pressed on there. So this thing might be, most likely I'm not going to get the bearing off. If it's a front bearing, hopefully it's a back bearing. I, I don't even know if I can replace the bearings, we'll see. So it looks like a couple of screws here. I just know that this thing is odd and locked up. Yeah, what's funny is that I kept on turning the current up, thinking, is my current on good enough? Like, what's going on with this thing? Why is it locking up here? Um, but I'm glad I actually made it obvious, because I was actually kind of fighting that problem for probably about a month now, you know, and I had a bunch of random, like, lines on my prints, and I couldn't figure it out, and I was, like, looking at everything else except for the motor, because the motor wasn't, you couldn't see it, right? It would lock up when I wasn't looking at it, right? And it would start again. So it was intermittent, so it made the whole thing a lot more difficult to troubleshoot. Okay. That's a little tension tension watcher. Okay. I feel like that back bearing is I think the front bearing feels fine. So I'm feeling, I'm looking for grittiness, but the back one, I don't know if I have one of those bearings or not. I'm going to take that part in our NEMA 17. Look at this. Okay, yeah. Is there debris in there? Or is there rubbish? Or what's the deal? So I'm looking for, I mean, obviously it looks like there was some contact, so it seems like it'd probably be the back bearing. Not super bad. Let me get my strong glass on. All right, so there's really, there's two Nina 14 motors, um, which is, can be kind of confusing if you're new to this stuff. So you have your NEMA 14 square motor like this, but then you also have a NEMA 14 motor, which is the round motor. Um, but that's considered like the 36 millimeter. I'm just going to pop the bearing out of the back here. on the shaft. Even if the thing's this off slight yeah I can just feel the whole the whole bearing's crunchy. Um except I don't know if that's I mean that seems like you're uh, you'd see on a typical NEMA 17 motor but I don't know if I'm gonna get that. Like it doesn't even make sense to I don't know, I mean to buy an air bearing I have to look at my it's so tiny I'm probably have to get my microscope just to see what 
what the model number is on this thing. But even that just small, let's even like half a millimeter of bad clearance could make this thing rub, you know? Because this is super tight on there. So the front one feels good. Back one's bad. All right, so I'm going to go through my NEMA 17 box here. I have down here. And stepper motor box. So it's kind of a mess down here, but it's a box of NEMA 17s. All right, so I'm going to go through this and see if I can find a bearing that matches. Hopefully these videos uh, are sort of interesting. Um, one of the things I know is I've seen some other, uh, the, the NEMA 1436 millimeters. They actually have the larger bearing in the back, like this front bearing. So it makes more sense to have the, you know, um, i got to be careful because I think I have uh, metal shards in this desk. This thing is magnetic. So, um... Yeah, I don't. That's a pretty odd size bearing. I, I wish they just would have made it the same because most of the NEMA 17s have the larger bearing. So, um, might be out of luck here. I'm actually looking because even like just extruders and stuff might have a bearing in there, you know. I gotta look at like the pulleys and stuff, you know. I do actually I have tons of extruders. I've been doing this for a long time and I have 600 and 3D printers. So, um, lots of times that they'll just leave the stuff like the upgraded parts. You know, I have boxes of extruders and parts everywhere. You know, maybe there might be a bearing here I can use. All right, we might have a, a fit here. So I have a little bag of old Titan, Titan Arrow and like Titan stuff, E3D stuff. Uh, I actually hated that extruder. Um, that bearing might fit. It looks like it's pretty close. I might pop it out. All right, look at that. Okay, so, um, looks pretty close. Let's see if it'll fit on the shaft. I think, I think this is good, though. Before I put that back in there, I'm going to make sure I don't have any debris stuck in there. I don't know if that's a piece of debris. I'm going to use my air compressor and just see if I can blow it off. All right, we're back in business. Thanks to the operation again. Yeah, I'm glad I keep all my old parts. I wouldn't have had that bearing without it. So, um, kind of interesting. So if you guys have never seen the inside of one of these motors before, that's what it looks like. Um, so if you do actually, if you are going to buy one of these motors, I've seen the other ones with the larger bearings I got in the front. Um, you can actually see them in the pictures, but they actually have the bigger bearing. Find, find one with the bigger bearing in the back. I think that will last longer, be more rigid. Well, here actually I found an example of what this thing was doing. See how it seems like the, it was like losing a, like a layer? So the motor was like starting and then, or locking up and then going again. But intermittent, so it's hard to figure out. It's like, what's going on with this thing? So, at first, I didn't know if my bed was out of alignment or it was like it was loose or something. It was, yeah, that was weird. So, um, all right, so I'll start the print again. So, why I had the whole thing taken apart, I re greased the needle bearings and the extruder HX light here. Um, yeah, it was frustrating because I was about four hours into it. So, all right, so this is a pretty big print here, eight hours, really complex part, too. So, Let's see if it hangs.